It is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, that actually speaks to us this morning. We are in the month of November, a season of thanksgiving. And so, this is what it says, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds, through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. During this season of thanksgiving, we've been dealing with an attitude of gratitude, this morning, I want to encourage you and possibly give you some direction on the challenges that may come in our lives uh, as we have been dealing with for the past 10 months, the challenge of a COVID-19. Texas has reached uh, the uh, greatest level first of over a million cases reported. And we understand this can be very Challenging. It can be very uh, uh, stressful on the people of God, as with all. But the Word of God addresses those things for us. And I believe what Paul was saying to the church at Philippi will help you and I deal with whatever we're going through, no matter what area it addresses it. The Bible talks about, uh, in the first part of Philippians, how Paul encouraged the saints there at the church at Philippi because they are going through some things, challenges that all of us face, all of us deal with. There's no way around it. And Paul wants to encourage them uh, so that they will move forward in the things of God. And so at this point in his letter, he tells them, be anxious for nothing. And I think that's important for you and I today because we do have reasons to be concerned. But Paul says for the believer, we are not to be worried or anxious for nothing. Some writers believe that he has taken a portion of what Christ taught about on the Sermon on the Mount when he talked about not worrying about tomorrow. Paul says be anxious for nothing. What are some things that is going on in your life? home life, work life, challenges physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, financially. What are some things that you can honestly say, I've allowed it to get to the place of worry or anxiousness? Paul says, I want to give you, and one writer called it a cure for cares. Uh, he gives us an antidote for handling the anxieties that come upon us. He first tells the believer be anxious for nothing. I think that's important because he says, don't allow anything to get you to the place and to the point where worry begins to come in. Worry begins to pull you. Worry begins to hold you hostage. Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Even the areas where you believe you can control he says, don't allow worry or concerns to that degree to hold you hostage. Be anxious for nothing. Pastor, but I've gotten uh, a bad report from my doctor. Be anxious for nothing. Uh, Pastor, but I'm not able to pay my bills the way I desire to. Or I don't have money left over uh, for other things uh, when I've paid my bills. Be anxious for nothing nothing. Uh, Pastor, but you don't understand. It looks like when I come out of this thing, I'm going into another thing. And it looks like uh, I, I take uh, two steps forward, but five steps. He says, be anxious for nothing. 
Now, that's easy to say when a person believes that they are uh, having life easy or everything is going your way. But I'll confess to you, those of you that are scholars of the word, you will know that Paul wrote this letter while in prison. He is being uh, a person in bondage and he is encouraging the saints of God at Philippi that they are not to worry about anything. He says, be anxious for nothing. Uh, if you know uh, uh, just a part of that scripture, actually uh, verses 4 and 5 tells you why. He says in verse 5, he says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. He says one reason that you and I don't have to worry about anything is because God is right there with you. Don't allow worry to hold you when you know God is with you. Uh, it is like a parent that will step, step in front of the danger of their child. God is right there with you, so you have no need to be anxious. He gives us the cure to help us with anxieties. He says there in verse 6, But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. If I were to take just a second there to tell you, when he says with prayer, he's saying you ought to have a continual conversation, communication with God about everything. So if I'm used to talking to God, I will not allow worry to come in. One commentator would say that one reason people worry so much is because they don't talk to God enough. When you don't talk to God, worry comes in. But when you talk to God often, he takes away the worry because you know he can change everything at any time. So Paul says uh, with prayer, with continual communication, he not only says with continual communication, he says also uh, and supplication. This is important because not only does God want to communicate with you, but those specific things that cause you to worry, those things that cause great uh, concerns, he says tell God about them. That helps you release those things that will co hold you hostage. He says, by prayer, communication, and supplication, your request to God. Uh, you want to be specific. It is, if it is bills, tell him, God, you can handle every bill. I've gotten to the point where I can't take care of it. You can handle it. If it's a physical ailment that the doctor has given you a, 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 a bad report, God, it is my body. You are the creator. You are the sustainer. So heal my body. It is ironic that people would take the word of the physician who had to go to school and learn something about our bodies instead of trusting God who created and sustains our body. Paul says, by prayer and supplication, talk to God often and tell him those areas of concern. That word supplication actually means to voice those specific requests. But this is where I have to lay my hat this morning. Because we are in a season of thanksgiving, uh, it was ironic to me. How do you tell God and you communicate with God about a problem and add to it thanksgiving? He says, with thanksgiving, I'm always ready to tell God thank you when things are going great and I've come out of something. But how about when I'm in the middle of the problem, do I say thank you right there? And Paul says, if you want to get past what you're dealing with, you ought to learn to tell God thank you, even in the midst of what you're going through. He says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. He says, go to God and say, this is where I am. This is what's going on. Thank you. Now, somebody would say automatically, what reasons would I have to give God thanks in the middle of what I'm dealing with. Well, I'll give you just four. One is for the spiritual blessings. Let me just pause there and tell you, if you have not thought of the redemptive uh, uh, blood that was shed for you and I, if there's no other reason to tell God thank you, you ought to tell him thank you for what he has done on the cross through Christ Jesus. When he forgives you over and over and over. I know you may have only messed up a couple of times in your life, but some of us, 
we can confess that when I messed up again and again after the cross, he still forgave me and in loving arm saying, come on. That's a reason to give God thanks, even when I'm going through something for the spiritual blessing. Uh, there's another one for the physical blessing. I know you may not be as healthy as you desire, but the saints of old would say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning and giving me a portion of my health and strength. That's a reason to tell God thank you. There's another one. What about the material blessings? I'm adding them up for you because in the middle of what you're going through, he's saying when you talk to me and you tell me what you need, don't forget to tell me thank you for where I am. So he says not only for spiritual, not only for physical, but for material things. Some of you, uh, if not all of you, had a choice of what you wanted to put on this morning. You had a choice of what you wanted to eat. You have a place that you can sleep, a cover over your head, a car to drive. He's saying don't forget not only the physical, not only the spiritual, but also the material blessings that God has given you. One last one. What about those external blessings that you did not pay attention to? Pastor, what are you talking about? It was not that burglar bar. It was not that alarm system. It was not, not that a lock on the door. It was not that skill for driving that protected you from harm. God protected you even when you didn't even see it and did not think about it. So he says, there's a reason to tell God thank you all of the time. Even when you're going through something, you ought to pause and say, God, I may be dealing with this right now, but because of your greatness and your goodness and your faithfulness, I have to add to my prayer and supplication, thank you. Thank you for bringing me this far. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Can you just think about two or three things that you really know you ought to tell God thank you for. If you got a job, you ought to tell him thank you. If you're waiting on getting a job and he sustained you to this point, you ought to tell him thank you. So Paul brings out several things that we ought to tell uh, God thank you for when he mentions to us. Uh, there is one writer, he said that there are two main things that we are to tell God thank you for uh, when we think about it. He says we ought to tell God thank you for the work of creation because if you are like me, you know that the Big Bang Theory did not just happen overnight and something just came to being just because there was a clash, there was a creator and God thought about us to such a degree that he would say in the book of Genesis is I'm going to create them in my likeness and according to uh, my image. I'm going to create them so that they will be a representation of me on the earth that I created. That's a reason to tell God thank you because of creation. But he goes on to a second reason. He says not only are we ought to tell God thank you in creation and because of creation, but we ought to tell him thank you for his work in sustaining, in providing. When man was created, he gave man everything they needed. We have everything we need to live on the earth. God gave us direction. And so one writer would say that if there's no other reason in your life, you may be going through some bad times. You may be going through some difficult times, but you do have a reason to tell God, Thank you. I just want to give you uh, four areas that may encourage you in this, uh, because when I read uh, Philippians 4, uh, 6 and 7, when I read it, I understood that he's trying to get me, verse 7, to a place of peace. I don't have to worry. I can be in a place of peace. How many of us really do want to be at a place in our life where we have peace? Uh, one uh, person would say about the God type of peace that he gives us is perfect peace. That type of peace that says when it's good, I'm good. When it's bad, I'm good because I have the God given peace. Verse seven says that he will get us to that place, uh, uh, to the place, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. 
So when we read the, 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 the parts in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, he brings out something that I believe will encourage us when I was reading it. One part uh, I would have to piggyback on 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, because he says that in everything we ought to give thanks. Would you just uh, comment that in everything? Preacher, I'm going through this. It's hard in my marriage or on my job, in my finances, physically. Uh, uh, the writer there, he says, in everything. He says, don't just wait till you come out. Don't just wait till you believe it's going to be down the road. But in the middle of what you're dealing with, in everything, give thanks. That's important because I want to deal with that uh, uh, with with Thanksgiving. I ought to add Thanksgiving in everything. Pastor, you don't know. I, 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 I'm getting stressed out. Uh, uh, me physically, I'm starting to go through something that I've never dealt with before. The pressures are on me. And the writer says, if you really want to be uh, uh, at a place where you have God's peace in everything, Give thanks. Uh, he's not saying that I don't see what I'm dealing with, but he's saying while I'm dealing with it, I'm going to tell God thank you in everything, in everything. So on my job, thank you. In my home, thank you. What I'm going through, thank you. Preacher, that's difficult because the pressures of it. Paul is saying there in Philippi, uh, Philippians, he's saying uh, make sure you understand that you can still tell God thank you in everything. So he says, in everything, give God some thanks. In everything. Uh, 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 in the good times, thank you. In the bad times, thank you. When you're not thinking of all of the things that he has done for you, thank you. When you do think of the things, thank you. Uh, when you get an opportunity in the morning, you ought to start out your day by saying, Thank you. Uh, when you're on your break or while you're at work, there's nothing wrong with talking to God because he's right there with you telling him thank. When somebody is giving you a problem uh, and they're trying to give you uh, challenges in your life, they're forcing you to go to God in prayer. I know somebody would say, preacher, that ain't the time when I'm being stressed out. But Paul would tell the church at Thessalonica in everything, give thanks. Pastor, how is that going to get me away from worry and anxiety? Because he's saying if you're going to talk to the God that can change everything, in the middle of what you're dealing with, you ought to say to yourself, I need to tell him thank you. But then he moves forward uh, uh, when I'm reading the scriptures, when I'm reading the Bible. Uh, this brings out something else to me. Uh, in, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 16, uh, uh, he would write uh, through everything. You ought to give God some thanks through everything, not only in everything, but through everything. Pastor, how can I give God thanks through everything? Because you ought to know enough about God that by now he will not allow you to stay where you are. So if you're coming out slowly and surely through everything, you ought to say thank you. Pastor, it's getting better. Pastor, it's hurting less. Through everything, give thanks. Going through the challenges of life, going through there, uh, uh, he would bring out uh, while I'm uh, on the mountain, I ought to tell him thank you. If I'm going through the valley, I ought to tell him thank you. In the middle of all of that, and this season, I believe, is one of the perfect times to get in your mind, your heart, and practice, not only in everything, but through everything, give God Thank you. And you ought to just stop right where you are right now and just think about a couple of things that you owe God a thank you. Uh, uh, Pastor, don't don't allow me to stop you from telling him because some of us are like this. Uh, if you think of one thing, another one will pop up. If you think of two things, another one will pop up. He says through everything. Give thanks. I can't stop there because uh, the difficulty of one of the things I see in Scripture is not only in everything, not only uh, through everything, but uh, one writer in Ephesians 5 and 20 says, for everything. Now, this is hard, and I know it's a challenge because I can thank him for the good times, but it's hard to thank him for the bad times. I can thank him when I'm on the mountain, but it's hard to thank him for taking me through the valley. 
I can thank him for going to the doctor and they're giving me a favorable report, but it's hard to thank him for the challenging report. Let me just uh, mess with you there because oftentimes we forget that God is not only able to do anything in our situation, but he is giving us an opportunity to trust him in that situation. Uh, the writer uh, Paul would declare in the book of Romans, for we know that all things work together for good. If I know that, when I go through the difficulties, I can tell God, thank you, because you're causing me to be mindful of who you are and what you do over and over. So even in the middle of what I'm dealing with, I can say thank you for it. You're making me stronger. You're causing me to draw closer to you. You're causing me to be mindful. If you brought me through it in the past, you're taking me through it now, and I'll come out of it later. Thank you for taking me through this, Lord. Uh, uh, I understand uh, most people would, would, would dare say, preacher, but I can't thank him for the difficulties or for the challenges of life. Uh, a good a cook, a good baker, uh, uh, I'm one of those that I want my food well done. I want it cooked well. And so if it is going to be cooked well, I understand that I have to leave it in the heat for a while so it can be right for me to be able to eat. And some people don't want to be uh, left in the heat for a period of time. But when you start thinking about when you come out of that, you're going to be well done. You're going to be completely whole. You're going to be at a place where you will tell the devil, I've been through that. You can't get me on this no more because I've thought about how good God has been in it, through it, and even for it. So Paul reminds us uh, in everything. But this is my last one because he challenges us, uh, uh, us. He says, with everything, give thanks. With everything. That's Psalms 150 and 6. He admonishes us, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says with everything, if you really think about how good God has been, you won't hold your praise back. You won't hold your thanksgiving back. You won't uh, 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 stop and say, wait a minute, uh, uh, did I tell him for this, that, or the other and not that? You won't say, no, that's enough. Every now and then you need to go into overdrive. Uh, you need to go into overtime and tell God, thank you for this. Thank you for that. You've been too good for me not to tell you thank All Paul was saying was, no matter what situation I'm in, before I allow worry to take control, I'll tell God about it and then tell him thank you. Now, this is my last part, because when I say thank you, oftentimes uh, you would say, preacher, uh, the thank you that I'm telling you, it ought to be after the fact. And uh, if I were just thinking about that on one side, you would be right. We normally tell God, thank you after the fact, after you have given me, after you have blessed me. But Paul says our relationship ought to be to such a degree that every now and then before you come out, you ought to say thank you. Preacher, I'm not out yet. But but thank God. How can I get to that place in that point? Well, verse 5 says, uh, let uh, uh, verse 4 rejoice in the Lord always. He says, before you go through, you ought to remind yourself, God has been good to me. Before I deal with something, I'll remind myself, God has been great to me. Before I, I'll just lift my hands and raise my voice. I haven't went through that yet, but I'll rejoice in who God is. Paul says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So every now and then, I'm going to uh, uh, encourage you, admonish you today, the month of November, you ought not complain about anything. Preacher, it does not mean that I'm not going to go through something, but I ought to tell him, God, I'm going through something, but you've been so good to me, I'm going to pause right here and say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Has God brought you through anything that you ought to be able to tell him, thank you for bringing me out. Thank you for bringing me through. Thank you for holding me then. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for healing me. He says, with thanksgiving. Then he says, in the middle of what you're dealing with, tell him thank you. God, I'm hurting. God, I'm crying. God is difficult. But with all of that, I'm going to still put on top of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then when you have the faith to come out of it, he says, when you really know who God is, when your relationship is right with him, he says, before you come out, you ought to tell him thank you. That means I have a level of expectation because I know God is going to bring me out. 
So before I get out, because I know he's going to bring me out, I'm going to tell him thank you. Thank you for bringing me through. Thank you for bringing me out. Preaching it hadn't ha happened yet in the physical, but I'm going to praise him in the spiritual because I know he's going to bring me out. So I'm telling him ahead of time, thank you, Jesus. One songwriter said, don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout. And so Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, that even though we may go through something, don't worry about it. He says, this is how you get through it. Pray, talk to God with supplication. Tell him what you need. And then with it, tell him thank you with what I'm talking to you about thank you thank you because I know you hear me thank you because I know you're leaning in thank you because I know you're reaching for me and thank you because I'm coming out of it this Sunday morning I want to encourage you with Thanksgiving go through what you're going through with Thanksgiving deal with what you're dealing with with Thanksgiving with Thanksgiving Paul would declare in verse 7 and the peace of God tell somebody I want that kind of peace I, I want that peace I want that peace it's hard right now but I want that peace I want that peace that surpasses all understanding where I don't even understand how can I be calm cool and collected when I'm going through something look at somebody and say take it to another level not only can I be calm, cool, and collected when I'm going through something, but I can also rejoice when I'm going through something. I can also praise him when I'm going through something because I've talked to God. i told him what I need, and i told him, thank you, Jesus, with thanksgiving. Paul declares for you and I, during this season of thanksgiving, let us be mindful that no matter where we are, no matter what we're dealing with, we have a reason to tell God thank you. I want you to do this right there where you are. Because I know this season of COVID, the season of uprising and uh, the injustices that we've been dealing with, the uncertainties and the difficulties even in this political climate can sometimes cause us to be worried or to that level of anxiety. But I believe God will encourage us that I'm going to help you get past it. And I want you to talk to me. I want you to tell me exactly what's going on. And I want you to tell me thank you. That's a level of expectation. So I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray with you right now. That the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart, your mind. So would you do this, my brother, my sister? just as an act of faith and connecting with me I'm going to ask you to bow your head because we reverence God we bow our head I'll ask you even in the comfort of your own home I'm going to ask you if you would to close your eyes so that nothing around you will distract you or disturb you so with heads bowed humbly eyes closed Father today it is true we deal with different things at different levels in different areas of our life. But you showed us today through your word. You told Paul to tell him, don't worry about anything. Don't allow anything to get you to the place of worrying. So you told him, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But you told us how to get past it. You said, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Be specific in that prayer. Even though you should know, I already know, I want you to release it by talking to me and by making your request known to me, supplication. But then you told us, when you really have faith in me, you will add with it thanksgiving. And so today I pray for my sister, my brother right now. If, 
it is physical, I pray right now that you would touch their body and thank you for doing it. If it is financial, and if it is relational, if it's mental, emotional, whatever it is, we bring it before you. God, this is what I'm dealing with. I don't want to worry about this anymore. Thank you for releasing me from this. Thank you for not allowing this worry or anxiety to hold me in bondage. Thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because you sustain me. Thank you because I know you're going to bring me out. Thank you today. I've made it known to you and I believe that your peace for my sister, for my brother will come upon them. That peace that not only we can't understand ourselves, but others won't understand how we're able to handle it in such peace because you will guard our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for meeting the need of every person under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord, for reassuring them that they can rejoice now because of my faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing a level of peace in our home, on our job. Thank you for bringing a level of peace in our relationships. Thank you, Lord. We believe by faith that you are turning those things around as we release them to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. At the risk of sounding too repetitious, would you just tell him thank you over and over? You could add in the middle of it a few things. Thank you for healing. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for carrying me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your favor. Thank you, Lord God for all of your many, many blessings that you continue to do for me. And I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor for touching and healing every person in the name of Jesus and everybody in agreement. Would you just say amen and amen in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week on purpose, and I look to see you again soon.